Okay, well this is my bench and you can see it because I cleaned it for this. Our goal today is to show you how to make and tune sight escapement planes. These deceptively simple planes are as refined as period furniture and an integral part of its construction. There seems to be a perception today that the early planes were primitive or crude in some way, and that's simply not the truth. The fact is that by 1750, they were mature technology. In the late 17th century, uh, there was this magical thing that happened. Uh, the restoration in Great Britain, and, and that's when these planes emerged. Uh, they're probably the most sophisticated planes ever made until we come along. Okay, I'm Larry Williams, and I make traditional wooden hand planes in the style of the 18th century British planes. The plane is basically a, a sharp edge with a way to hold it. Each of the planes have a very specific function and a set of features to make it work. If you want to make one of the kind pieces like furniture, the most efficient way to do it is with these. Uh, some of the moldings that you would make I could make quicker with hand planes than you could make with machines. And I can make virtually any molding I want with a set of planes like this. After years of working on scaffolding and doing roofing, all kinds of dangerous stuff, I walked out my front door and after an ice storm fell and shattered my elbow. And there was a couple of operations to reconstruct it, but it never healed. Carpenters need both arms. Uh, nobody's going to make allowances for a one-armed carpenter, so that was really all I had to fall back on. Uh, there used to be kind of a joke, uh, the successful woodworker is one whose spouse has two jobs. Well, mine had three for a while. <laughs> Probably 80% of the work we do is handwork at the bench. Uh, the machine speeds stuff up somewhat. Okay. Colonial Williamsburg has got a lot of our planes. They have a historic trades department where they have the different trades, not just demonstrating, but actually producing the products that uh, would have been made in Williamsburg, and they want period-appropriate tools. Well, that's what we do. I work with Don McConnell, who's an amazing friend that I met on the internet, of all places, at the same time he was raising a daughter, cautioning her to be really careful on the internet. We, we were in constant touch. Um, talking on the phone virtually every Sunday morning, sometimes for hours, uh, for two or three years at least, um, and through emails and so on. And I basically, I think I was kind of a sounding board for him. Um, and maybe he found some encouragement in, in the fact that there was at least one other person that was interested in this rather esoteric topic. Of course, Don sits here and uh, you can tell who's in charge. He watches me. Oh, I've learned tons from him. Uh, he probably has done more research than anybody I know. You know, people know us as the people that made planes for Williamsburg. Uh, the first person w Williamsburg got to make planes for him was Don. You know, I. I couldn't have found anybody with the kind of experience he had to come here other than him. We both started out 
you know, interested in it more just to figure it out for ourselves. I mean, it's not like we, I don't think we had a, a strong sense of mission about it. Uh, but, uh, you know, once you begin to figure it out and realize just what the capabilities are there, you, you think that, I mean, I, I believe that more people would really benefit if they understood how this all worked and, and had the capacity to, to do it. If you talk to woodworkers and they say, a oh, work can do a thousandth of an inch is nonsense, we do it every day, all day long. I, there's a reason band-aids are close. <laughs> we work at a steady pace and try and get stuff out the door. Uh, when Don got here, I was working seven days a week, and as soon as he got here, we were able to say, no, that's six days a week is plenty. We do have a waiting list that's mostly a testament to my inability to run a business. The, the waiting list, when we stopped taking orders, was at least three years long. And it's getting obvious that it was actually longer than my worst estimate. These are some of the more common tools you'll need for plane making, and I hope you have many of them in your shop already. You know, this is all stuff that's 300-year-old technology. This belongs to all the woodworkers out there. It doesn't belong to me. I may have gone in and figured it out, but that evidence was there for anybody. You know, we've had the best people bend over backwards to help us. You know, the, the people that have studied stuff, uh, spent a lifetime studying it, and, and all the really good ones, all they've got to do is know you're interested and they help, you know, and, and I'm really indebted to a whole bunch of people like that. And the only way to pay them back is to make sure and pass on everything that we've come up with. I hope the information we've provided here inspires you to make your own planes, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I've enjoyed making these. Don and I don't make a lot of money now. We're comfortable. Uh, we're doing okay. And I think we're both happier than we've ever been. And, uh, what more can you say other than being happy? I would like to think that, uh, that in some way we will have played some role in a renaissance of traditional hand tool woodworking, particularly centered on on the use of, of wooden planes. We're not doing this to try and produce old tools. Uh, we're, we're making modern tools in the 18th century British style because I think they're the most sophisticated planes ever made. Hopefully between the two of us, we've been able to get places that neither of us would have gotten alone. I know I never would have gotten anywhere without, without Larry in, in, in the direction that this business has taken us. You know, it's really gratifying to take a piece of wood and, or two pieces of wood and a chunk of steel and turn it into a tool that's better than anything anybody can buy. I've learned tremendous amounts from them and you know, in some ways in terms of figuring out tooling and methods of manufacture, he is kind of a genius actually. Uh, and uh, I rely on that all the time. <laughs> you know, my college roommate retired a few years ago and, and I asked him what he was going to do and he thought for a while and I said, well, I thought he would travel some. And he said, what are you going to do when you retire? And I said, well, I'll never be able to retire. He said, well, what would you do if you could? And I said, well, I get up the next day and do just what I'm doing today. So maybe I've been retired for 18 years, I don't know. If we ever make a perfect plan, we have to stop. <laughs>